So now that we've dealt with factoring trinomials whose leading coefficient is one, so you have a one x squared as your first term, now we're going to look at factoring uh, trinomials whose lead coefficient is not one. So you'd have something like a 2x squared or 10x squared as your first term, okay? Uh, and now to develop the idea for this, I'm really gonna show you two different methods. One's called the AC method and one I call the modified AC method. The AC method is a little bit longer, uh, but maybe a little more logical, whereas the modified AC method is uh, sort of a shortcut um, however, um, it can cause a little confusion in certain situations, but I think it, it tends to be a lot nicer uh, of a process, okay? So to develop the, the ideas here, I'm gonna go through, uh, kind of like we did with the other type of trinomials, we're gonna start with a multiplication problem. We have two binomials, multiply them together, and then look at the patterns in the numbers to see where things come from. Okay, so I'm gonna start with one of my favorite uh, products, 2x plus 3 times 5x plus 7, okay? Uh, now, I like this because we have all prime numbers up there, all the coefficients are prime, and so it's easy to keep track of where they come from, or where everything comes from, or, or where they go, okay? So, if I were to multiply this, again, I'm going to start by multiplying, not factoring, and then at the end, we'll apply what we the patterns we see to the factoring process. So in multiplication here, we're going to have uh, 2x times 5x is 10x squared. 2x times 7 is 14x. Uh, 3 times 5x is 15x. And 3 times 7 is 21. Okay, And so, uh, of course, I could combine the two terms in the middle. I'll have uh, 10x squared plus 29x plus 21, okay? So, um, yeah, this would be our final multiply form. Now, if I wanted to factor this, I'd have to somehow get from 10x squared plus 29x plus 21 back to this uh, factored form and have all the coefficients in the right spots. Um, and that's not a super simple task. It's not even really straightforward. You can tell some things about the final answer. You can tell that uh, the 10 has factors of two and five, and the 21 has factors of three and seven. Okay, so you can kind of tell that the, the lead coefficient comes from the product of the lead coefficients here. The constant comes from the product of the constants up here. But don't forget, there's other factors of both 10 and 21, right? 21, uh, oh no, yeah, 21 is, uh, 1 times 21 also. 10 is also 1 times 10. And so it's not always necessarily clear that it's going to be the 2 and the 5. It could be a different, it could be the 1 times 10 combination. Um, it's also not clear what order they're going to be in. Maybe the 5 goes here and the 2 goes here, or the 7 and the 3 might switch or something, okay? So the order in which they appear could be different. And so I can't just sort of start picking and guessing, although uh, one method that is often taught for doing this is called the guess and check method. I don't like the guess and check method. I won't make you do it. If you know it or you like it, you go ahead and do it. Um, but I'm not a big fan. The guess and check method is just that you pick the factors of the, first, of the lead coefficient, which are one and 10 or two and five, and you put them in the parentheses and you take the factors of 21, which are 1, 21, 3, and 7, and you put one of those combinations in the parentheses and multiply it out and see if it works. If it doesn't work, you try a different combination until you get it to work out. Um, I don't like that because it creates, I think, a lot of unnecessary work for you. Um, so the goal then is to get these four numbers, to pick the right four numbers in the right combination to get a 29 in the middle. Um, and that's the tough part. Uh, however, there's some interesting patterns. One real, really interesting pattern is some of the products that are up here. If you were to multiply together um, the 10 and the, actually let's go to the line above, the 10 and the 21, 10 times 21 is 210, okay? 
If you were to multiply 14 times 15, and you could try this on your calculator as you watch, or do it by hand, it doesn't matter. Uh, but if you multiply 14 times 15, you will also get 210. What's also interesting is if you go up to the original uh, parentheses here, the original factored form, and multiply all of these coefficients together, if you took 2 times 3 times 5 times 7, you will get 210. Um, and so all those products give you 210. The reason they all give you 210 is because in each of those combinations, there is one factor of the original coefficients. Right, so here's the, the original coefficients 2, 3, 5, and 7 appear once in each of these, right? The 14 is a 2 and a 7, the 15 is a 3 and a 5. Here the 10 is a 2 and a 5, the 21 is a 3 and a 7. And so the, it's really the same product just with the combination scrambled a little bit. Um, why is that important? Well, this number 210 is what we would consider AC, all right? The trinomial here is in the form that we call uh, AX squared plus BX plus C. And if you were to multiply the lead coefficient and the constant, which are the AC, you will get this 210. That number is a key number. It's kind of like unlocking a door. You find that number and it helps you to um, sort of decode the rest of the information. So 210 is the AC product in this case. And what you're then looking for are factors. So AC is 210. You're looking for factors of 210 that add up to 29. Remember, when we worked with uh, lead coefficients that were 1, we only needed to find factors of the constant that added up to the middle term. Here, instead, we need to find factors of the product of A and C that add up to the middle term.